Today we're going to look at a very cool differential equation. And well, what makes it nice? Well, observe that over here on the left hand side, we have a y prime in the exponent of y. So I think that's pretty unique in terms of differential equations that you might see in a standard differential equations class. And well, what's nice about this is it's constructed in a way so that the solution is pretty nice. Okay, so let's look carefully at the differential equation, which is in fact an initial value problem, and then we'll solve this. So we have y to the y prime equals x to the y. Okay, so anytime you've got variables in the base and the exponent, which we do here, we have a dependent variable in the exponent. So y is dependent on x, which is the independent variable. So anyway, anytime you've got variables in the base and the exponent, you generally want to take a logarithm of both sides of the equation just to bring those out of the exponent. So let's do that. So taking a log of both sides, we'll have the natural log of y to the y prime equals the natural log of x to the y. But of course, we have some logarithm rules that allow us to bring these exponents out in front of the logarithm. That's just using standard logarithm rules. So here we have, well, what is it gonna be? y prime times the natural log of y equals y times the natural log of x. And let's put here that's because we know the logarithm rule. And that says the natural log of a to the b is equal to b times the natural log of a. Okay, so now where are we gonna go from here? Well, perhaps we'd wanna do something that's like a separation of variables. So get all the dependent variables on one side and all of the independent variables on the other side. And so we can do that by dividing both sides by y. So let's see, that's gonna give us the natural log of y times y prime over y equals the natural log of x. And I've written it like this because now let's observe that the derivative of the natural log of y is equal to y prime over y. So it looks that in fact, something like the chain rule has been done to the left-hand side of this equation, and that motivates us to maybe do some sort of substitution. So let's set z equal to the natural log of y. But now that tells us that z prime is in fact equal to this y prime over y, but that makes this left-hand side equal to z times z prime. So let's write that down over here. So what do we have? Like I said, we have z times z prime, but I'm gonna write z prime as dz dx is equal to the natural log of x. But now we're set up to do what is sometimes like the sketchy step of separation of variables where we split the dz dx into two parts. And well, this is really just shorthand for doing some sort of substitution, but it works. So we're gonna do that. So let's, like I said, split this dz dx up and what we'll have is z dz is equal to the natural log of x dx, which of course tells us that after integrating both sides, we'll have one half z squared is equal to the antiderivative of the natural log of x dx. But of course, in order to take the antiderivative of the natural log of x, since the natural log is an inverse function, we'll generally use integration by parts. So let's do that over here. So let's maybe have this magenta arrow pointing towards the magenta box, just saying that that's what we're doing here. So let's take u and set it equal to the natural log of x 
and then dv will be equal to dx. Remember the standard rule is to take u and set it equal to the thing that becomes simpler under different differentiation. Or in the case that you're working with an inverse function, the u part of the integration by parts is the inverse function itself. Okay, so this means that du is equal to one over x dx, and this means that v is equal to x. And just as a reminder here, observe that we're using our standard integration by parts formula, which says that u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so what does that mean for our case? So we'll have one half times z squared is equal to, so u times v will be x times the natural log of x. And then let's see, minus the integral of v du. So that'll be minus the integral of, well, x over x dx, in other words, just dx. So that means here we have x times the natural log of x minus x, and then we'll put plus our constant of integration in there for now. So now let's maybe figure out what that constant is by applying our initial condition up here, which is y evaluated at one equals one. But notice that uh, z is equal to the natural log of y, but since the natural log of one is equal to zero, we know that z evaluated at one is in fact equal to zero. Again, by our initial condition up here, okay. So from here, what we're gonna do is, well, apply our initial condition. So let's set x equal to one and see what happens. So by our observation over here, we know that the left-hand side will become zero and that'll be equal to, well, x natural log of x. Well, that's gonna be one times natural log of one, which is zero and then minus one and then plus a constant but that tells us that this constant is in fact equal to one. Okay, so I think that's looking good. Now what we'll do is solve this equation for z. So let's see, we'll have z squared is equal to two x times the natural log of x minus two x plus one. So I just multiplied both sides by two and then I inserted the fact that c was equal to one. But now we can take the square root of both sides and let's see what we have. So we'll have z is equal to plus minus the square root of two x times the natural log of x minus two x plus one. Okay, great. Now the question is, well, do I take a plus or a minus or am, am I left with both choices? Well, in this case, we're left with both choices, and this is just depending on, well, what the value of z is away from this initial condition. And you might say, well, doesn't that contradict some sort of uniqueness of the solution? But anytime you've got some sort of nonlinear differential equation like this, there may not be a unique solution. Okay, so that being said, now we're ready to go back to our original variable, so z was equal to natural log of y, but observe that that also means that we know that y is equal to e to the z. So since we know that, we can just jump to our final you know, solution. So we'll have y is equal to e to the z. We know z is you know, that object over there. So what we have is y is equal to e to the plus minus square root of 2x times natural log of x minus 2x plus 1. And there you have it. That is our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.